So, a dark view then of the upcoming Nigerian presidential election with the civil society group SERAP, the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, calling in the International Criminal Court, or ICC, to investigate escalating political violence and prevent an attritional onslaught that it reckons could turn into a post-election bloodbath. Serap believes that some political parties have assembled thugs and political hirelings to launch offensives against political opponents and their supporters, creating a sort of combat environment that the civil society group reckons could destroy hopes of a free and fair election. But why the ICC and not the Nigerian authorities? And given that the time scale for the Nigerian ballot is now measured in days, not weeks or months, is it even possible for the ICC to secure the necessary permissions and mobilize to this country with such short notice? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now on the line from Lagos by the Deputy Director of SERAP, Kolawole Oluwadare. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Oluwadare, for joining us. Uh, we've got you on the line whilst when we're hoping to get you in the studio, but I understand you had transport problems, so we appreciate the fact, and hopefully the line will hold up. So tell us more about why you are asking the ICC to intervene and what exactly it is that you want the court to do. Um, thank you very much. I'm very hopeful that the line will hold at least much more than the naira of the petrol of keys we see in filling stations, Mr. Charles. And so the ICC being called in by Sarah at this moment is very important. And we are all keen observers, if not participants, in what is unfolding as a, a, a dramatic uh, violence, but the pre-election violence. And the jurisdiction of the ICC is very important now, based on facts and on law. And the factual basis is what we see happening over, the, over months and weeks now as we approach the elections. The violence is escalating. And if there is a pattern to it, what's across more than 20 states, as it were. And that amounts to what we can call uh, crimes against humanity under Article 7 of the of the Rome Statute, which Nigeria is a state party. And so Nigeria being a state party, so that means that the International Criminal Court can step in at this time. And there is precedent for this. We've seen this happen in Cote d'Ivoire. We've seen this happen in Kenya, where the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court was activated. And in this instance, the call presently is for the prosecutor, the office of the prosecutor, which is an independent body, apart from the pre-trial and trial chambers, to send in a legal team that will investigate the growing cases of pre-electoral violence and ensure that they participate as it were in the elections, observing elections itself, to be able to ensure that the uh, pre-electoral violence is, is stopped. And at the least, if the violence continues, it means that the prosecutor will have the much needed evidence that he will need to prosecute those uh, that are perpetrating this violence. And this is very important because the Nigerian state has shown an unwillingness to either investigate or prosecute these um, uh, perpetrators of violence. And that in itself activates the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court by virtue of Article 15 of, of, of the Rome Statute. So, so basically, um, you're calling in the ICC as a preventive measure to forestall the possibility of violence escalating and presumably your thinking is that the presence of such a legal team of ICC investigators and auditors or whatever at this election will serve as a deterrent to violence. Yes, naturally. And that is one of the key reasons why in democracies all over the world and elections, we have international observers who are on ground not only to be able to carry out an objective assessment of how the election went, but to be on ground as well to forestall those who may want to play uh, uh, unfair at the elections. And so having the International Criminal Court on ground at this time we will be able to allow the prosecutor to have a real feel of things on the ground and activate the jurisdiction of the court uh, to investigate and prosecute those who might be culpable. Having regard to the fact that Nigerian state has shown an unwillingness either investigate or prosecute these individuals. So it is very good as a preventive measure. 
And even if it progresses, it means that the International Criminal Court will have the much needed evidence because they will be part of the elections themselves observing to prosecute those who may continue to perpetrate violence either during the elections or post the elections. And I have mentioned these have been done in Kenya and these have been done in Cote d'Ivoire uh, with good results, by the way. Yes, but, but that, that's the point I wanted to raise because you suggest that there is precedent uh, in this request. But, I mean, it sounds as if it's unprecedented because it's not usual, is it, for the ICC to send in auditors or investigators to monitor post-election violence before it happens. No, 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 we need to understand the context of the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. The context that we are inviting the International Criminal Court is that of crimes against humanity. And we've seen the patterns of the violence, including the deaths and the fatalities. It matches the description of what can be termed as crimes against humanity in Article 7 of the Rome Statute. So we are calling in the ICC to that investigative power of the prosecutor to bring it to bear now. Not majorly as to observe elections, but because of the violence and the crimes against humanity that is going on presently, and that we fear is likely to grow and escalate uh, to post-election violence. And we've seen that happen in other African countries as well. I'm talking about the pre- uh, and post- election violence. So if they're on ground now, the investigations they're able to carry out to be able to pinpoint individuals and possibly uh, public institutions that are culpable in this instance. And that will be the preventive aspect. And if this violence continues, at least at the minimum, the International Criminal Court will be able to have individuals uh, gather evidence against individuals who are uh, actors in this violence to be able to ensure that they face justice post the elections if the violence continues. And uh, uh, have you received any response yet from the ICC? Because, I mean, in 2019, the PDP tried to do what you're doing now. They tried to call them in because of election violence, but there was no response. We are yet to get a response, but uh, the, this present advocacy overture cannot be likened to what the political party did in 2019, and that is really logical. Seeing that the PDP was a, a major party, you, you can hardly describe the political party uh, participating in elections as an objective observer, uh, objective party, so to speak. But in this instance, Serap is non-political, we are non-partisan, and we are just concerned as citizens of Nigeria as this electoral violence of force, it may not bode well for the country. And that is why we need to act now to ensure that we do not only prevent it, but to ensure that individuals who are hell-bent on the electoral violence uh, are brought to book. And the, the unwillingness of the Nigerian state, it's quite obvious. It is not for a lack of public institutions that could either prevent the violence or make sure that people who are doing these are brought to justice. And it's not the absence of laws either. The Electoral Act is very clear on what pertains, uh, what, what electoral violence means. For instance, Section 116 and Section 120 describes the various acts that are taking place over the weekend in Lagos, for instance, as Electoral as the act of electoral violence and their criminal acts by the way. And INEC is statutorily empowered to even prosecute um, people that have been found culpable. But what we have seen is that nothing is happening. People get more emboldened day by day to carry out these attacks, including those who are public officers themselves. And we do not want this to continue. And that is why it's very important to activate this means now uh, to prevent this ugly trend. But I mean, doesn't the ICC need the cooperation and the assent of the government to come into a country? I mean, it, it can't just come in unbidden of its own accord, can it? Uh, the prosecutor, as an independent office, has the powers uh, to investigate comments and in investigation. And in this instance, as the procedure goes under the various regulations of the ICC, the prosecutor will approach the pre-trial chambers for authorization to open an investigation. It's very important to note that what we're asking uh, the prosecutor to do and what he has powers to do now is the investigative stage. And while the consent of the Nigerian government is needed in principle, it is not needed in fact, because the Nigeria has ratified, as it were, and uh, is a member of the Rope Statute in 2001, it means they are bound by the jurisdiction and even the judgment of the International Criminal Court. So what is needed right now is not the consent, or as it were, the cooperation of the Nigerian state. What is needed is, do we have enough facts 
to convince the Office of the Prosecutor in the Central Criminal Court that crimes against humanity is taking place and is likely to escalate. If that question is answered in the affirmative, yes, the Prosecutor has every need uh, and has every power to do so. And I really do not see the Nigerian State Party refusing to do so. It would amount to a breach of international law, really, for the Nigerians to decline in this instance. And if the ICC, I mean, I know you touched on this peripherally um, at the outset, but if the ICC, in replying to your request, says to you, why ask us? I mean, why not ask the Nigerian police and the Nigerian authorities? What would your response be? Um, it is unlikely that this kind of thing would happen. It is a scenario that might happen, and it is captured well in this in the in the Rome Statutes. So, uh, what it will play is what is called the complementarity principle. It means the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court does not replace uh, that of uh, the local institutions, but it would have jurisdiction when clearly uh, these institutions either do not uh, or cannot or act to prevent the. Right. OK, I think we just uh, lost Mr. Kolawale there. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what, what, what happened, uh, but we seem to have lost him for a minute. But we will obviously try and go back uh, straight away to try and get him. I mean, the line was holding up rather well there, so I'm rather mortally disappointed that he's vanished. Um, but he was making some very salient points and uh, points that suggest according to his argument, that they do have a point in trying to convince the ICC to bring their team down to Nigeria to carry out um, an, an investigation, a preliminary as well as a preventive investigation to try and forestall what they argue could be a post-election bloodbath in Nigeria. The way things are going, I mean, I, I have to say that um, much as I don't entirely agree that, that, you know, things are degenerating to the level that they're suggesting that it is, but it certainly seems to be heading that way because we've seen what appears to be, in, certainly in the last few days, the almost daily occurrence of violence. Um, the, the picture you were looking at there on the screen is from that Lagos rally held by the PDP uh, on Saturday in which um, many people um, who were supporters of the PDP were attacked by sort of people armed with machetes and, and, um, and guns and uh, many of them quite badly hurt and uh, had to go to hospital. Of course the the uh, amount of damage, I mean, many cars were destroyed, buses and so on and so forth. And um, the, the, the Labour Party are estimating that, I mean, the, the cost um, in terms of damage to property is certainly in the tens of millions of Naira. Um, jury is still out on who's going to have to pay for that, um, but that's the... The, the scenario that we're seeing. Um, the question, of course, that we still had for uh, Mr. Uh, Olua Dare um, and, and his Serap team who, who've uh, uh, trying to call in the, the ICC is um, how they can be sure that, you know, the police, I mean, because some of these things just happened, I mean, admittedly, it, it's happened, I mean, uh, over a few weeks, uh, isolated in, in incidents, but it, it's become more intensive in the last few days. And the police have said that they're planning to investigate or that they've started investigating. Um, and, you know, they deserve to be given time to investigate. Thank you.